Well, good evening, good Friday evening, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm sitting here getting set up for my live stream for uh, 9 o'clock tonight. I'm so happy because getting back on track, we've been, of course, in Vermont doing some uh, uh, charity projects and things, and I had a hard time, one, being tired as can be, and two, um, the internet, we had issues with uh, being able to stream and stuff there. So we're back on track tonight, and we will be um, doing that in a couple hours. And while I was getting set up, you know, going down YouTube and things, and this is another one of those crazy things. Now, this is the off season where, you know, there's not really a whole lot. This is where you get speculation, possible trade scenarios, trade targets, a lot of misinformation and stuff. And this is one that's kind of crazy because this is from Chris Canty selling the idea of Bill Belichick being the coach of the New York Giants the following season with Dak Prescott leading them to a Super Bowl. I, 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 you got to listen to this. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. We're not yeah. talking about Brad Stevens. Who, Evan? Who is it? <laughs> Billy F. Baby. Bill Belichick. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm glad we're back to where we need to be with this, which is yeah. we should be talking about Belichick for all of these jobs. For whatever ridiculous reason, no team hired him in this offseason cycle. But this is what all of these situations now have set up for in the NFL is that when you have a team that's kind of in a gray area, and that maybe hypothetically after this season that they don't have a head coach that they need. I think all of the things that have happened with Belichick from the roast to McAfee to go into these you know, speaking engagements. I saw him with the Harbaugh's to go into the Celtics game. The humanizing of Bill Belichick has happened here that I think the teams are going to be excited about him. Yeah. And I think with the Giants specifically, it's the right blend of functionality and desperation. Like, they're operating like a franchise that is buttoned up now, but you're hearing murmurings, mumblings about how they might not necessarily love Brian Dayball, the beef that he had inexplicably with their defensive coordinator, Wayne Martindale, when that was the strength of the team last year. And then, of course, the instability at the quarterback spot. If you're the New York Giants, if your owner's John Mara and Steve Tisch, if your general manager, Joe Shane, you would have an opportunity after this season if the Cowboys don't extend Dak Prescott to cut bait from Daniel Jones and make a division opponent in Dallas weaker by poaching their quarterback. I, I think the Giants could back up the Brinks Wait, truck for more. Dak Prescott. I don't think they would have any problem playing Dak Prescott upwards of $60 million a year if it meant taking him away from a division rival. And oh, by the way, Dak Prescott, in terms of the individual brand, is exactly what the New York Giants would be looking for in terms of a quarterback that would represent that franchise. He's buttoned up. He's polished. He always says the right thing in front of the cameras. He's a productive player. It's an easy sell to the fan base because of strengthening your quarterback but also weakening the division opponent's quarterback. And then you put him with a head coach like Bill Belichick? It feels like microwaving the New York Giants to being a championship contender if you add those two elements next offseason. I love the idea of Dak going to the Giants. I think he'd be a perfect addition to that team. And if he can handle the pressure that he sustained in Dallas, he, he can, can handle, handle it anywhere. He can handle New York, absolutely, Cece. Even with all the media attention that comes with playing for a New York team, I think it would be small potatoes compared to what he dealt with in Dallas. Oh, Smalls, I I'm glad you brought that up because think about it. If you're Dak Prescott, you're not just going to any NFL team. Mm -hmm. You're playing on Broadway right now, which is the Dallas Cowboys. That's what Jerry Jones told me when he drafted me. You're playing on Broadway. It's the biggest stage in the NFL. If you're Dak, you, you don't regress to a, a, a small stage. Like you have to go to a flagship franchise, yeah. and the New York Giants are a flagship franchise. It's the fourth oldest team in NFL history. They're celebrating their centennial this year. If things don't go the way that John Merrill wants them to go, knowing the history of the organization, I could see them taking a big swing at quarterback next offseason, and there would be no bigger swing than being able to steal Dak Prescott from the Dallas Cowboys. Giants fans would rejoice. But then also – understanding the history and the rivalry between those two franchises and then being able to use, you know, use just cash as opposed to 
actual draft picks in order to get your franchise quarterback for the next half decade. I just think that would be a phenomenal move. And again, that will put the New York Giants on the short list of teams that I would have as a title contender in 2025. Yeah, it makes sense for a lot of reasons. And you're right. He goes from a place where the spotlight is very bright to an organization that still has that cachet in the biggest market in our country. I understand for so many reasons why the New York Giants would want to take that big swing and bring in Dak Prescott. But I don't know why they'd want to bring in Bill Belichick to be his head coach. Okay, I'm going to just stop here for a second. What the hell did I did, did I end up in an alternate universe while I was gone or something? Did I did I take the wrong turn and end up in a, like I, I, a pair? I, it's it's crazy because Chris Canty has been this one that Dak Prescott needs to take a a pay cut. Dak Prescott, you know, he's a choker. This that and the other. And now you are talking about praising Dak and saying how great it would be for him to be in New York. Not only in New York, you say pay him an upwards of sixty million dollars. And upwards of $60 million? Wait a minute. How is it that that is a great move to pay for the Giants to pay more money to Dak Prescott to get him there, but a bad move for the Cowboys to re-sign him? You can't have it both ways, bro. You, you, you literally cannot have it both ways. And, you know, I, I get a lot, believe me, I get a lot of hate from a lot of trolls and things like that, in, including Cowboy fans, that will go through and tell me that, you know, Dak is ass-ass. And, you know, when I talk about other quarterbacks that have gotten paid and things like that, they'll say, well, you know, you're just a Dak Prescott fan. He's a garbage-ass quarterback and stuff. You know, I will give you give you one 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 just one thing that's, one of these things that drives me crazy. There are Dak isms, Dak isms that only apply when Dak Prescott is the quarterback. If it's a bad number by Dak Prescott, it's the worst statistic in football, and they will pound it in your head that Dak Prescott does this more than anybody else, and it's awful. And that was when he broke his thumb. He had a season where he turned over the ball a lot more. He was tied for first. Not going to lie, it was bad. But you can figure that since you hold a football with four fingers on one side and a thumb on the other, breaking one and coming back early in the season may have a little bit to do with it. It just may. You might want to give him a pass a little bit on that one. The funny thing is, is we keep hearing about Dak and his contract and him getting paid and everything else and how he doesn't deserve the money and stuff. Well, last season, led the league in touchdowns. Last year, one of the lowest in interceptions. What's interesting is is turnovers weren't really anything that was talked about last year after training camp. We had the DAC watch of how many times there was an interception in practice. But when the season got here and DAC wasn't leading the league in it, nobody talked about it. Let me give you an example here right now because people will say, oh, yeah, well, Trevor Lawrence, no problem with him getting a contract. Oh, Trevor Lawrence, man, you know, he, he was the number one pick in things, right? Here's one of those statistics that you look at. And when you look at this is the last three years, turnovers, most by a quarterback, total turnovers. Trevor Lawrence has 60, the most in the NFL over the last three years. Josh Allen has 59, second most. And then it drops off quite a bit to Pat Mahomes with 46. And then um, Derek Carr, 44. And then Dak Prescott at 43. And you can see that the, the main majority of quarterbacks have have, you know, between like 33 and 43. You know, this is the main grouping. The outliers, of course, are Josh Allen and um, Trevor Lawrence. But nobody calls them out on that. Nobody says that with Trevor Lawrence basically saying, uh-uh, I'm not taking a, a, a weaker deal. I want, like, Jared Goff money. Nobody bats an eye unless it's Dak Prescott. I'm just trying to point these things out. I know that talking to many of you, you are so tribalized that you won't listen to, 
you know, anybody else's version of anything that you're not open-minded to actually seeing the difference. I still try and put it out there and maybe at some point we'll see the difference. I tell you what, if Dak Prescott went to the New York Giants and we didn't have him, you would see the difference. And maybe that's the only thing that will take to get you guys to change your opinion on what Dak Prescott has meant to this team. Alrighty, good people.